Coming up on CTV Sports, a doubleheader with league titles at stake. First, the girls of Santa Cruz and Soquel, both 10 and 1, vie for an outright SCCAL title and the one seed in the tourney. Then the boys of Soquel try to knock off first place Santa Cruz to capture a share of the league title. Championships at stake now on CTV. Welcome here to the ancient, legendary gym here at Santa Cruz High School for our CTV doubleheader of the week, Soquel and Santa Cruz. Along with the coach, Kurt Edwards, my name is Tim Swartz, and uh, Kurt, so much at stake tonight. Tremendous amount at stake. First place, as a matter of fact, at stake, Tim. And after you go through first place, that gets you the seating for the SCCAL tournament. And then you can go into the CCS tournament. Outside of that, not a thing's important about this whole game. Both boys and girls teams from Soquel and Santa Cruz will be in CCS. We'll look at their latest results, and both these teams have just been smooth sailing. They really have. They've gone right on through it. These teams have met before. Soquel coming out on top. The latest results we got around it. They're, they're going in on win streaks. Santa Cruz coming off a very easy win against St. Francis. And then Soquel coming off a win against Aptos. And, of course, they've got the games in front of them. So... Winning programs here. Very evenly matched teams. Uh, maybe one thing that you think is going to decide a win or a loss for these teams? Well, probably it's going to be Soquel on to deciding on what they're going to do with uh, Polly Pappas and Kloss and both two outstanding players for Santa Cruz. Soquel's defense is going to be the tail of the tape on this one, Tim. It's going to find out how they play. Again, the gym will be rocking here at Santa Cruz High School. It's the CTV Game of the Week as the girls of Soquel and the girls of Santa Cruz looking for an outright championship coming up next. Back here at Santa Cruz High School, the CTV game of the week, Santa Cruz and Soquel, as we start up our doubleheader. CTV Sports is a presentation of community television of Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit membership organization serving county residents by providing education and tools to access media. Visit us at communitytv.org. This presentation is made possible in part by the generous support of Cruz IO Internet, Santa Cruz County's largest independent internet service provider, offering high speed wireless internet, a co location data center, and flexible workspaces with 10 gigabytes of fiber internet. Details online at cruzio.com. Santa Cruz Diner at the Santa Cruz Diner. You'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz, on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And Upper Crust Pizza, buy Upper Crust Pizza and Pasta on Santa Cruz West Side at Mission and Swift. Family owned and operated since 1979. Upper Crust offers nightly dinner specials and every Tuesday is all you can eat pizza. Dine in or take out on the web at uppercrustsc.com or call 423-9010. And we are here with Kurt Edwards. My name is Tim Swartz. Let's take a look at the SCCAL girl standings. We let you a little bit know about it in the, in the early and this is it. This is the championship of the regular season. It's all the marbles right now. You can see Soquel Santa Cruz right on top. The Scotts Valley, Aptos, St. Francis, San Lorenzo Valley had a hard year this year. But this is where all the marbles come to play. And we take a look at the Santa Cruz County uh, Sentinel Pole. And it's these two teams at the top. The Sentinel has Soquel at number one. They do. And, of course, they're coming off of a winning streak. They actually had a huge winning streak that St. Francis snapped a couple games back. So they're sitting one, two, and three. It doesn't really vary very much. Kirby Prep down on the bottom. And we go off to the visiting team for this contest, the SoCal Coaches Keys with Coach Wilson. Coach Wilson is what he's going to have going. Is just very simple. Stop Clawson and Pappas, handle the pressure, 
And of course, you're going to have to get the offensive rebounds. And that's going to be very, very key for John Wilson and the rest of the Lady Knights is control the boards. There's Coach Wilson right there, multiple year coach here at, so at SoCal and also coached here at Santa Cruz High School. Tremendous athlete and coach. And on the other side, Patrick and Monique Jones, their co-head coach coaches keys. They are, and they're going to be defend the three. Yes, Stewart can really shoot the three for the SoCal Knights. Control the paint. They want to get as many rebounds as they can and get in a good transition game as fast as they possibly can. Exe execute the offense and hit those shots. Clausen and Pappas, they want to get the ball in those two hands as much as they possibly can. So we're joined by a third member of our broadcast team, Rusty Reed, who has a little on how Santa Cruz has been successful. Santa Cruz, 10 and one records, that was mentioned earlier. So Kel, they're 10 and one because of team depth, team chemistry, and, and, and they're just solid from one end of the other. Great balance for SoCal. Santa Cruz, on the other hand, they have to rely on a dynamic duo. The only two seniors on the Santa Cruz team, Ashley Clausen, number 14, and Polly Pappas, number 11. And of course, if you have to rely on only two, these are two good ones. They have a lot of talent, experience, and similarities between the two. Oh, oh, they're both four-year varsity players. They both have CCS titles on their resume. They both put about the same number of points on the board, 15, 16 points a game. They're both good ball handlers, relentless defensively, as well as offensively. And what I think the most interesting point about these two girls and their similarities is they both know how the other one thinks. So Ashley will always know where Polly is on the court, and Polly will always know where Ashley is on the court. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of dance they choreograph tonight. Bottom line, as Ashley and Polly go, so go the Cardinals. We'll see how it all unfolds at Santa Cruz and SoCal for the regular season league championship right after this. A championship at stake tonight. SoCal and Santa Cruz first with the girls and we'll have the boys later on here on CTV Sports. Tim Swartz along with you with Kurt Edwards and both these teams ready to go here at Santa Cruz. And we'll look at both these teams starting lineups. We start out with the SoCal Knights. And for SoCal, as uh, Rusty mentioned, this is a very balanced scoring team. You look at all five players, and maybe the best athlete is going to be the four guard, Regine Graves, who is a Division I setter in volleyball. She's a fantastic shooter out there. She'll be in double figures. And of course, over for Santa Cruz, you've got Pappas and Clausen, those are your two number one and number two scorers for Santa Cruz. So Kel, they're going to be coming out all the way around. McBride Stewart is a very, very good shooter of the three-pointer. If you remember last year in the uh, SCCAL tournament, she lit the place up from outside three-point land, and she's back again. One of the things about Polly Pappas is a forward. She also clears the board. She's averaging right around 10 rebounds a game. So. Both of these squads are deep. Both of these squads have a lot of talent. There's Monique Jones right there, right in the foreground. One of the co-head coaches, if you will, for the Santa Cruz Cardinals with her head. And there's the referees. John Hadley on your left. Curtis Gomez, not really in your picture. That's Bill Bunner behind him. Frank Paws, and there's Curtis Way to the right, tying his shoe. Frank Paws to... Uh, one of the referees this year taking a little time out after some knee surgery. Here's a shot of that Santa Cruz bench, and they are very enthusiastic. And now one thing, Tim, you're going to be able to find Clausen out. Look for the orange shoes. Looks like a Caltrans. You see them on your screen. You also see the pink and gray Argyle socks. That's a first for Santa Cruz, but it's worked for them this season. We mentioned they're 10-1, and one, and the first time these two teams matched up, Kurt, it was an edge, uh, really, that was the difference. Just a game of inches, and uh, it was a real close one. It really was. It turned out Santa Cruz jumped out on top really quick, actually owned the game through the first two quarters, still had the lead in the third one, and then San Soquel pulled great defense, only allowing Santa Cruz seven points while scoring 13. That was the difference in the ball game, 44 to 40, in favor of the Soquel Knights. And I guarantee you one thing, Pat Jones, is going to want a little bit of revenge, especially with the title on the line and that number one seed going into the SCCAL tournament. That one seed is a, a real 
big thing, too, because that gives you a, an extra buy. You don't have to play in the first round if you have the one seed in the SCCAL tournament with seven teams in the league and the one seed getting a night off. You see Coach Wilson, and uh, you, you'll probably see him at some point in the game courtside, is Pete Newell Jr., who really has an incredible coaching tree. He really does. He coached Coach Wilson. He coached Coach Jones right there here at uh, Santa Cruz High School. Coach Newell Jr. has been, was here for 20 some odd years, an incredible legacy, and coached a tremendous number of coaches and athletes in the area. And you see Coach Newell Jr. as we open up this tip with the Cardinals controlling it. And as Mr. Edwards mentioned, Ashley Claussen will be very easy to find on your screen with the bright orange shoes. She goes to her teammates and one of her good friends, Polly Pappas, who's averaging 15 a game, and she pours one in 2-0 early for the Cardinals. They made that one look very easy, did Pappas and Claussen. Packed house here in Santa Cruz as Roca's up the left wing. Flips it up top for Tori McBride. Right wing Graves rotated around the arc. Left wing, it's Roca with eight on the shot clock. Looking to penetrate. This is out up top. Open three stepped into, and it's off for Tori McBride. Good zone defense put on by Santa Cruz. Here is Claussen with the ball, and she's going to go between the circles, set up the offense. Claussen has accepted a scholarship to play at Southern Oregon University. Nice ball rotation by Santa Cruz. So Kel in a man-to-man -man type of the defense. Left side, stepping into this one, or a Pesa, and it's no good. The lone listed forward, Clark, ends up with the rebound for Soquel. They play a four guard lineup with a forward. Graves tries to have the backdoor bounce pass, and it's taken away. Coast to coast, Claussen puts it up and good. Now that is a situation, Tim, where Soquel didn't hustle back, and Claussen saw that opportunity, so Kel didn't hustle back, they turned their back on her. Roca on the backside, pulls up from 15, front iron no good, Graves takes the rebound, she puts it up in the foul. I like the aggressiveness of Graves before, the last time down for so Kel, that one too many pass sometimes, Tim, can actually burn you, but that time, Ro Graves doing a good job inside, turning and trying to put the ball up. Good thing, ha you know, you could get the shot blocked, Tim, let's face it but you might as well put that thing up because you could get it in and a foul. And the three-point play completed by Graves. We mentioned she's going to be playing Division I volleyball as a setter. Right side, jumper is a little strong for Hadley. Clark grabs that rebound, and Pappas doing a nice shot. She brings it in, kicks it back out. Hadley's had a nice shot, just didn't get it to fall. So Kel? Slinging the ball around, trying to find an opening in that Santa Cruz zone defense. Off to the right corner for Taylor Stewart. Right side, high arcing jumper, nothing but net for Clark. That's one of the things on this zone. If they back off, you've got to take it. Clawson down very quickly. They do not hesitate on offense. Or a pace and nails a jumper. And Santa Cruz retakes the lead six to five, two and a half minutes in. Coach Wilson not happy for the SoCal Knights. They've got to set that tempo. They've got to stop the ball. In other words, if Boston's got it, you've got to put a body on her and slow her down. Hard to do. Or a Pesa has been the third option on this team, averaging eight points a game. McBride up top with eight on the shot clock. Bounces it for Roca. Just five on the shot clock. Clark with the three. Long. But the rebound and the turnaround for Clark is good off the miss from Stewart. That was a brilliant move by Clark. That ball didn't hit anything. The shot clock was still going. Stewart just a little bit long. Already our third lead change in the first three minutes and change of this game. Flossen gave up her dribble over to the right wing for Poppins. So Kel manning up. They're marking up very, very well. Or Pace has got the ball. They're looking for a cutter. Clawson was that cutter. Great one-handed pass, or a Pesa just a little bit short. Stewart on the fast break, leaves it off for Graves. Looks to drive in on Clawson. Roca, left wing, high archer, nothing but net. I like that with, with Rocha doing a nice job of getting underneath. And then coming right back out, nice shot. 
got to move the ball on both of these teams. You have to take it inside, open up that outside shot. Rocha did a nice job. Ball's rotated up top. Jamis over to the right side. Great spin move from Pappas. Off balance, no good. And Roca ends up with the rebound. Polly Pappas does a nice job. You know that little shot is a nice release on her. She puts that ball up. Gets good rotation off the shot, good wrist movement. McBride up top has been running the point guard. Roca's posted up up left wing. Here's Stewart, long on her shot. And the rebound is a air ball collected by Jamrick. Down the court to hand check Colts. It's the first foul of this game, and it's called against McBride. Okay, one of the things, Tim, I think McBride's going to have to do is stop Clawson, and it's hard to do because she is such an aggressive player. Very, very quick, will not be denied a route. But you're going to have to stop her coming down the court somewhere between the circles. If you don't, she's got that extra gear that she's got. She's going to be able to get by you and cause havoc. That time was just a foul on the floor, no shot. Clawson, nice bounce pass in and fouled as she went up with Shane Hapley. And she'll get two. Shane going to go to the line, and that's where movement off the blocks on an out-of-bounds play. You're going to set a screen. You want to keep creating movement. It happened perfectly. Shane was able to get the shot off. Misses the first one. Gets down underneath against Clark, who put just a little bit too much arm and body in there. And both free throws are made. It's a 10-7 lead for the Cardinals. 2-3 zone. Klaassen is at the top right of that zone. Substitution for Soquel Natalie Diaz, a freshman at 5'11's into the game. Graves, right wing three is too strong. Now's when you've got to stop Klaassen. They've not been able to do it. You just got to run and she takes advantage of it. It's going to be a blocking foul. That is the, what the damage of number 14 can do. Those orange sneaks that she's got. I don't know if they're painted or they came that way. But anyways, watch her go. Threw that one right by McBride. The defense was not able to get set underneath. Graves took the shot. She's going to be all right. John Wilson out to check on her. It's a third team foul against the Knights. There it is against Graves. It's a blocking foul. She's just a little bit late. And I think I like the call there of, of the aggressiveness from Clawson was uh, rewarded. It was, and it's going to be rewarded. And that's one of the things that you... You watch basketball players, I don't care if you're watching Stanford, Cal, Soquel, or Santa Cruz. That little bit of aggressiveness, that extra charge through. Cal's got a, a young player on there, women, Boyd, I believe is her name. She is afraid of nothing, and she just charges the middle. So if you ever get a chance to see Cal play basketball, go watch her play, you'll really be impressed. She is one good athlete. Boston will make the first free throw. She is, as we mentioned, an all-around player. She averages five and a half assists per game, four and a half rebounds. But, I mean, can you put into perspective is the second free throw is good, and it is a 10-9 game as, uh, as Santa Cruz is down by now just one. But can you put in perspective how good is five and a half assists per game in, in high school? It's absolutely fantastic. It shows that she's got tremendous court awareness, able to move the ball. Watch Soquel, they're looking for some kind of a shot to take it, and they're able to get that one off with Diaz with three points. And Diaz is just a freshman, and she is 5'11". Ora Peza had that good shot look, but she pulled that one down. Diaz on her right now. Watch the constant movement for Soquel, looking to get the ball down inside. Right now, great defense by the Soquel Knight. Pappas drives the lane, dishes out Oropesa, open 17-footer, rattles out. And a rebound is knocked out of play by the Cardinals, so the Knights will get the ball. Bertelson, number 21, on the battle and gets the ball out of bounds. He is going to be in. One of these, you're going to see Soquel, Coach Wilson will change his personnel, will change the looks quite a bit. Coach Jones, not quite as much, but you will see some pretty good personnel come off the bench for the Cardinals. McBride, who's sharp-looking point guard, brings it up the floor. Roca out of a screen. Backdoor cut for Graves. Double team. Put it up. It's no good. Graves tried to save it from going out of bounds, and instead she'll lose it as Pappas was pressuring her. Polly Pappas does a nice job on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. She's averaging over 15 points a game, 15.7 and 10 rebounds. 
She's another one of those tremendous basketball players, but defensively is where she shines. Fawson, up top, dribble drive. Right wing, short on the shots. Was Ablieb and Graves, who has very good hops, is able to collect the rebounds. She comes down and she should take that ball all the way up now and take it to the rim if she can. And she will. On the floor is where the foul's called. And it's against Pappas. Pappas, just a little note, most of our viewers probably know. We go down the middle, Pappas puts her arms up, but she was did not have her feet set. So she's going to get a blocking foul call on here. Hobley, number 25, going to the bench and bring the ball back inbounds to Shokel. McBride inbounds it off the left wing from Marissa Azua, 5'11 forward. We take it to the lane, backdoor cut all alone is Diaz, and she'll lay it in. There's when you start to go down the middle, Tim. Defense goes to you. You've got to find that open player. It's a great job. Lawson gave up her dribble up top, and the turnover forced as Courtney Schmidt just came into the game, and it was a little bit too far out for her. And there's one of the things, now I told you, you have to try and stop Clawson between the circles, get her to give up her dribble. They did, the defense was right on her, and the result was a turnover. Look at this style of defense. Steal. Clawson takes it away, one-on-one -on -one with Azua. Great bounce pass, left hand layup, too strong, but Towel will get two free throws. The 5'8 freshman. Towel goes to the line, foul underneath. Those are one of those pretty good fouls. Clawson takes a peek at the shot, does a nice job of drawing the defender off. Towel underneath doesn't get the doesn't get the cripple, but she goes to the chair just right. First free throw is just off the front of the iron. You know, that's you get a free throw from 15 feet away, that's the loneliest spot in the gym. And here's the second. No good. Clawson got there and she was fouled. Now, everybody who's watching how they line up on the free throw, you got a defensive man underneath, the blue, then a white, then a blue. Boston doing a nice job of fighting through. Ball's going to go out of bounds to the white. She just circled around. Nobody blocked her out. This is the aggressiveness this young player has. Had a tremendous AAU uh, experience with Khalid Hicks, who also trains her a little bit. She is a great basketball player. So that foul went against Azua. That's her first personal fourth team foul. Graves, as she picked up the rebound, was fouled by Towel, who, as we mentioned, she's a freshman. That's kind of one of those freshman fouls you make about 70 feet away from the basket. Yeah, I am sure that the coaches, there's Pat Jones, is going to have some nice words. Look at, you don't need a foul down here. If she beats you, fine. We're going to get the defense down on the other end. Under a minute remaining in the first period, 15-9, the lead for the Soquel Knights. Roca, three-point sports star. Up top, fakes a three, drives in against the zone, and she just tripped over. Now this is one of those no harm, no fouls for Rocha. She just took that available drive to the hoop. She had a lane, and just tripped over one of the sneakers of the opposing team. So you, you see the, the confidence that John Wilson is in his, in his freshman, Diaz, who's one-on-one -on -one up top with Claussen. 15 seconds, shot clock dead. Pappas travel did get a travel. travel. Pappas, you can see with that little head fake, just drags that pivot. For, I mean, I got to give Santa Cruz some props. They've got some colorful sneakers. They got the basic black out there, too. Big pride all the way up. Graves drives in. Great backdoor pass and a big block from Pappas out of bounds. And there'll be three tenths of a second left in the first quarter. Just enough to get a shot, so it's going to be a pass in. It should be a nice screen off. Who's your best three-point shooter? I don't get anybody is right now. Just get it in, blow it up. Roca has that one blocked by Pappas. And Nick Clawson put some extra emphasis, knocking that one away. A little bit of momentum for Santa Cruz. We reach the end of the first quarter, 15-9 to here on a game of the week between Soquel and Santa Cruz here in the historic Santa Cruz gym with Kurt Edwards. I'm Tim Swartz along with the third man, Rusty Reed, who's part of our broadcast crew. And uh, any thoughts from the first quarter? Well, I've been impressed with the way Soquel is playing defense. They're doing a good job of just trying to slow the ball down. Pappas has not really been that much of a factor in the game. She only has two points. Claussen with four, Hobley with just a free throw, and Oropesa with two points. Take a peek at this block. You come down in, 
work it down in. You can see the defense set up underneath real quick. Pappas in there in towel, so one goes going to get her high, the other one low. Here's some upcoming games we've got. Of course, the SCCAL Basketball Championships. Always fun. Tim and I will be there. And the Wrestling Championship. A bunch of grapplers rolling around on the mat, having a whole bunch of fun. Pat Lovell and I will be down there having fun bringing that event to you. You see the Santa Cruz huddle. The five eight All right. Back here, 15 to nine is the score. You see our CTV Sports broadcast position just across the court, right next to John Wilson. You know, offensively for Soquel, you had Diaz with five points, Clark with four points, Graves with three, and Roca, Rocha, excuse me, with two. Balls rotated around the arc for Soquel, Diaz. For Graves. I tell you, Santa Cruz is saying, okay, Soquel, you want to beat us? You're going to beat us out far with those long range bombs. But Soquel is doing a nice job of working their way into the paint. They're moving the ball around. I'd like to see a few more cutting actions going through on an angle to see if maybe they can open up something inside. Jamaris was called for the foul. It's her first personal 15 foul. Ball's released up top for Tyler Stewart. Gives it off for. McBride, Tori McBride. It's not her job to score. She hasn't scored yet, but she's facilitated well. well she's sort of the John Stockton of uh, for Soquel. She fires one up a long way. Nice bet of going inside by Stewart to keep the ball alive. Graves, great idea in the middle of the zone. Lays it up and good. And you know, you, you talk about the 2-3 zone. That's the weak point if you can get in the, into the key. It's just no, nobody knows whose responsibility it is really to get the player. Now you've got to be, you know, that rotation through it. Nice lead pass to Pappas who lays it up and in. There's one of those many assists that you're going to see from Clausen. Clausen has excellent court vision. But as I was just mentioning, you see Diaz in the middle of the zone. That's where they're trying to work the ball. Yep, you're right. Now McBride's got it over there into the corner. They don't want to get it trapped in, in that side. Nice job, Clark comes in, but he gets it knocked away. Clausen, hesitation, dribble drive, leaves it off. Pappas, three-pointer, right wing, rattles in. And it's back down to a three-point game. You don't want to have Pappas get hot. She can hurt you. That's a good job by Clausen, came down, they stopped her. But she's got that good court vision, gets another assist with the pass over to Pappas. McBride rotates it up top. Diaz, wide open, Graves, right wing, three on the way, back iron, no good. And Pappas, who's averaging more than 10 rebounds per game, picks up another. She has been here, this is her fourth year. This is, I saw, remember her as a freshman. She has just, tremendous. she's improved tremendously. Of course, her dad, Pete Pappas, good golf coach, was a women's basketball coach here at Santa Cruz also for many years. Pappas, pull up jumpers, no good. Or a pace of fighting for the rebounds, out of bounds, and it's last off of Stewart's. So the Cardinals will keep it. Tim, one of the things you're seeing is we're getting a, a little peek at Rocha. Everything's being contested. Ball going out of bounds, ball everywhere. Kind of gives you an idea that these clubs realize this is the battle for first place. Lawson, left wing, long three is no good. Great rebound by Graves. Graves is not the point guard, but she can work the ball like a point guard. Underneath, wide open there for a moment and knocking the ball out of bounds off the defender is Clark, who for just a moment there had a, had a nice little scene, but the good defense from Pappas to get a hand on it. She was looking that way, and if you hesitate on a pass, it could be a basketball or football, that defense has an opportunity to read your eyes and react to it. And there's a perfect example as Clausen got a stopper, pulls up from 12. Back iron, no good. And Diaz with the rebound. Diaz dribbles out of trouble. I like that. Goes one way, so you can see it blocked off. Does not give up her dribble. She didn't give it up the dribble. The double team would have been on her so fast. Roca straight away, long range three. Front iron, no good. And the rebound is out off of the Cardinals. Excuse me, off of Soquel. That was off of Graves, number four. Now, she may be a setter in volleyball, 
But she's playing one of the big positions underneath, and she is fighting. She's up there contesting for every rebound. I like watching her play. She plays with a lot of intensity. Here's really a, what's, I think, become the matchup of the game. Diaz on defense, the man-to-man -man defense of Soquel as Pappas goes down and lays it up and good. But Diaz and Clausen's been a really intriguing battle. It is, and Diaz just sits right on her. She knows where Pappas is, and she's also looking for the ball. So one eye on Clausen, and the other one on where is the ball. You got to move the ball around a little bit quicker if you want to rotate through and beat that zone. Diaz inside of the zone from 12. She's got seven, leading the Soquel Knights to a three-point lead. Right on top of Pappas is Rocha. And I think this is wisely, Lawson's going to reset that offense. They switch on the screen, so Graves picks up Clausen up top. Ball's bounced to Pappas. Rocha on her, and the off-balance shot is good. That's 11. Pappas, as you know, she was coming through the key. She had her hands up, calling for the ball, and got it. And then she knew exactly what she was going to be able to do with it. One, one point lead for Soquel. Both these teams 10 and 1 in the SCCAL with just under four minutes remaining in the first half. And another nice move and groove from Graves. She's got seven now. She does. It's four here in the second quarter. She's got the only points in the second quarter scored by the Soquel Knights. Yeah, Santa Cruz has styled it up defensively. Pappas, one-on-one -on -one with Graves. Graves on the overplay, double team for Fazua. They go up top for Clausen in the lane. Running floater is good. Clausen sees that opportunity, a lot of movement offensively, a lot of switching back and forth defensively. Cohen Wilson calls a timeout. 30-second timeout called by the Soquel Knights. So everybody's gonna have to hang around. We're not gonna go very far, very fast on that one. And we look at this day in basketball history, it was an NBA All-Star game played at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. And some of the best of all time, Ralph Sampson, the former Virginia player, was the MVP. But a rookie by the name of uh, Michael Jordan, I believe, was uh, pictured there. And that was his first All-Star game. You know what? You can look at when these All-Star games were, and you're just thinking 35 years ago is when he was just a rookie. And, you know, his name is so always prominent as we take a peek at the Santa Cruz Hano that you think, you know, it was just yesterday that he stopped playing. You see this nice little give and go. There's that gap right in there. And the motion of the offense creating all that switch by, San by Soquel gives that gap. And Clausen has that quick first step and also a very aggressive dribble. She puts it on the floor. Her head is up and she's going for it. And another timeout. Well, we'll get this game started again soon. 316 remaining in the second quarter along with Kurt Edwards. My name is Tim Swartz. We thank you for joining us here on Community Television. We remind you we will have the SCCAL postseason championship. This is the championship game uh, tonight. 10-1 Soquel, 10-1 Santa Cruz. And I think uh, if you look at the, the banners here, girls basketball championships, two of the last three years in the CCS, I mean, Santa Cruz, they've always been known kind of as a boys' basketball power, but they've become a girls' basketball power as well. Well, they have definitely done that one. Pass all the way over to Graves. Nice little fake. All you've got to do is make a little bit of a head-and-shoulder fake. You watch the defender fly it on by. Nice step to the left, and then all you, you start going to the basket. If you're not challenged, keep going. If you are, pull up and take a nice little high-percentage jump shot. It is a packed house. You see, I mentioned earlier... You see Patrick Jones, you see the socks that are the special socks that these Santa Cruz players are wearing. Style. You know, it's, it's about style sometimes in women's basketball. You see the different shoes? Yep. Orange, you got, you got the blue Nikes with the soles, you got red, kind of like a Stanford Cardinal look. Blue goes there's also ribbons on those socks, so some breast cancer awareness month. It's supported by the Cardinals. Great to see that. Roca out of the break. Left wing three is shorts. And the rebound is cleaned up by Clausen. Long length of the court pass. Pappas, though, has that one stripped away by McBride. And that's defensively where you don't give up. You are, you know your burn on that long cherry pick and pass. Here comes McBride. Perfect job of getting that hand in right on top of the basketball. You know what's been really impressive to me, Kurt? 
is McBride is running the point as a sophomore. Uh, Diaz has been very big in this game. She's on the ball out to the far corner as a freshman. Yeah, I mean, the underclassmen have come up big time for the Lady Knights. There's no doubt about that. Ball is loose, and it's thrown up by Orpesa. Diaz, she does not look like a freshman, and she just ripped that ball out of the air. And SoCal right now is just trying to maintain a good pace of the game. They're going to slow it down. They're up by one. McBride running the points. I tell you, Tim, on this 2-3 zone, they've just got a little bit more. They should try and get somebody to post up right there in the center of the key. Easy to say, tough to do. They do that right now with Diaz, but they couldn't get the ball to it. And a great idea by Graves as soon as she was bumped a little bit, decided just to throw that one up and get two free throws. A foul is against Claussen. That's an experienced basketball player. Go on in, there's the bump, but you're on your way through, so you might as well throw it up to make that extra sell to the referee that you are in the act of shooting. Graves, first free throw is in and out. I give Coach John Wilson so much credit because uh, just watching college basketball, I've seen a lot of teams that do not execute this well at the Division I level against the zone. I mean, his team is executing very well. They're very patient. That's one of the keys to executing against the zone where you will be executed is patience. Moving the ball around, looking for it. Not there, keep moving. But it's also how quick do you move that ball. Graves goes one of two at the line, and it's a two-point lead for Soquel. They've led by as many as an eight. Pappas to Clausen. Left wing driving in is Lindsey Frankel. She lost the ball for a moment. And a foul score. Foul's probably going to go against Azua. Nope, it's going to go against Bertelson. That ball gets on the floor and everybody starts to go with it. Azua's coming out of the game right now. Clark come back in for the SoCal Knights. You see some of the fans on hand, some of the boys basketball players there. They'll be hooping it up in part two of our doubleheader. And that will be for a league championship as well. If SoCal can win, they'll win at least a share of the championship. Pappas through the lane. Scoop shot is no good. Diaz again clears the boards. She does a great job. She might want to have a little bit more patience before she drop, dribbles right on out because she dribbled into trouble. Bertelson up the left wing. Skip pass. Graves. They give her the three. She takes it. 11. I'm loving this one. Seven so far here in the second quarter. After eight. After three in the first. A lot of battle going on out there. And I'm just liking Diaz. Tim, you've alluded to it a couple times. She She's playing like an upperclassman in today's game. And one of the great things about youth basketball is you see everybody hit the deck. 23, Frankel going on the bottom for the Cardinals. Clawson will collect it up top, but one thing Soquel's made her do every time she touched the ball is work for the ball. You got to, and that's what you're going to hit her. She probably will not come out of the game. She and Pappas may never come out of this ball game. There's the shooter straight away. Ora Pesa. Cheyenne looking very good with that shot. Three-point lead for Soquel. Graves, great pump fake, pulls up, 17-footer, rattles it in. Patience, Tim. She had a lot of patience, set it up, gave that one little fake, didn't start her dribble because she didn't have to. And it was a little two-for-one, too, with a five-second shot clock, game clock differential. Clausen, pull up, 18. Yes, straight away. Eight for her. Here comes McBride, the last shot. We'll see how they're going to do it. Clawson pressures Graves. Eight the, seconds. McBride through the lane. He's fouled. Perfect job. Just what a coach would want to do. McBride saw the opportunity. She was coming off the right side. She gets by Orpesa. Nobody there. Could have been going either way. The blocking call was called underneath. So McBride's going to get a chance to go to the charity stripe. 5.4 seconds left to go on the speed dial. <laughs> and that's one of the things that, as a coach, John Wilson will say it, and Pat Jones, two great, great basketball coaches, please make your free throws. 
Both no good. Pappas ends up with the rebound. Three seconds. Up to Clausen like a streak of lightning. Off balance. Short. And that will do it. The end of the first half. 27-24. They run into the locker room. And Soquel has a lead. They led almost the entire first half. And the Soquel Knights have a 27-24 lead here at the half. John Wilson is about to join the third member of our broadcast crew. It's Rusty Reed who's standing by with John Wilson at the half. I'm with head coach John Wilson, Soquel Knights. Your girls are moving the ball great in this first half, but yet only a three-point lead. What will have to be the difference in the second half? Well, we got to stop Clausen and Pappas. You know, it's, it's like uh, they're it's the Clausen and Pappas show right now. And, you know, if we can stop then, I think we'll have a better shot in the second half, building maybe a lead on them. But you, had, you had them both under wraps. They each only had two points in that first quarter. What was the difference between the two quarters? Well, they started attacking uh, with the dribble a little bit more and getting closer to the basket. They were getting to the rim, and we couldn't stop them. Their shots started going in. All right, we'll let you go, Coach. All right, Thank thanks, Russ. Bye, John. We'll be back with the second half right after this. It's Soquel with a three-point lead, 27-24. Well, we expected a close one. We've gotten it so far. SoCal 27-24 in our CTV Game of the Week, the battle for the SCC AL regular season championship. We want to thank some of the people that made this broadcast possible. First of all, Santa Cruz Diner, where you'll find always great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz. On the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, price right at the Santa Cruz Diner and by Upper Crust Pizza. On Santa Cruz West Side at Mission and Swift, family owned and operated since 1979. Upper Crust offers nightly dinner specials in every Tuesday night. I love it. All you can eat pizza, dine in or take out. On the web at uppercrustsc.com or call us at 423-9010. With the coach Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Schwartz. A lot of fun here in the first half, a tightly contested game. Let's check out how the first half was played between these two teams. And well, we we're going to come in. We knew there was going to be a Polly Pappas type of a night. And you see she comes right down the middle, nice little touch, and just drops in that little teardrop type of a pass. And her running mate, Clausen, watch her. She is just a freight train coming right down. Now gets that lane opening and lays it right up and in. So Kel has been able to do some stuff, too. There's Regina working her all the way to Rocha. She throws one way out for three and is able to knock that thing down. And this game with Seesaw back and forth all the way around. Diaz also sets up behind the three-point arc. And she really puts one on in. And that's one of the things that Soquel has been able to do. Here's Pappas again, working hard on Rocha. Goes underneath and she's able to make that layup. That good first step by the young senior all the way through. Soquel working to try and beat that zone. Regina able to throw that one in all the way. Graves just having a fantastic 13 points so far on the afternoon. There's Clausen, a little step back from about 17 feet straight in. Nothing but the bottom of the net. So you can see that offense for all these teams has definitely been part and parcel to what's been going on, Tim. And take a peek at the Lady Knights as they walk out. And they're just working on some of that inside game and they'd like to get the ball inside right now santa cruz has yet to take the floor so underneath their basket is just a whole bunch of possible wannabes to should be's out there going through but tim you look at some of the scores that we've had here so kelp regina Gray's with 13 points rocha with two point three points clark with four and diaz for seven there's a shot of rocha right there there's two ugly guys in the booth. If I've hey, ever speak seen for that. yourself. I Kurt. did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's been a great game here so far, and we talked about Graves being such a great athlete and doing so many different great things. She's got 13 points. She's done it in a variety of ways. She had the and one. She's hit the three. She's hit the mid range game, and I think she's kind of been the player of the game so far for these two teams. She has been. She's been very tough defensively. She's done a great job getting those rebounds underneath. She's actually fought for some shots had gone to the charity stripe, so she is that major different. But look at it. you take Pappas and Clausen, 16 points, 15 and 16 points, and they're the top leaders for Santa Cruz. Pappas with 11, Clausen with eight. 
Halbleib with one or a pace with five. Nobody else has scored for the Cardinals. 27-24 is the score here at the half. And we go quickly to Rusty Reed, who's standing by. I'm with head coach Matt Jones, Santa Cruz High School. Another close one, just like the last time out. Uh, what did you say to Pauly at the end of the first quarter? She came alive after only two points. Uh, well, she was talking about how she was being overplayed. She wanted to set up some kind of back door. So we drew that up at the quarter, and it worked. And I think it just got her going, and uh, she felt it from there. From two points to 11, how do you put the clamps on Graves? Uh, that's the big question. She had 10 of their 12 in the second quarter. So we talked about ways to stop her here, and um, hopefully we can shut her down. She's hitting a lot of uh, runners and tough shots. So you know, we got to lock it down. All right, good luck, Patrick. All right, we're going to go back to the booth, Kirk and Tim. Thanks, Rusty. 27-24. We would thank Coach Jones also for taking a few seconds out right before the start of the half. And here we go. So Kel will be moving left to right on your screen with the Navy uniforms. And the Cardinals will be going right to left. And Santa Cruz comes out in a man-to-man -man defense. They were in that zone primarily the first time. McBride off the skip pass. Graves straight away. Three. Well, they're going to try and stop. Regina a little bit. They didn't do very well that time. So Kel immediately retreats defensively. They're not going to put that press on unless they have to. Get back and defend their half of the court. Polly Pappas, as we mentioned, is the leading scorer in the first half. Clausen travels. Clausen doing a nice job coming off the pick on the far side. And just had a little bit too much momentum. Diaz. Inbounds the ball for Soquel. Roca up top for McBride at the circle. Different defense from Santa Cruz. Right, they're in that man to man. They'll try and switch out of it. Graves just takes Kloss into the rack. 18. Graves. Loving man to man. She is quick. Watch her play volleyball. She's quick there too. Quick 5-0 mini run makes a three-point lead, an eight-point lead for Soquel to start up the second half. Straightaway jumper, clanks off the right side of the iron, but it's saved by the Cardinals. Graves deflects that pass, McBride chasing after it, but cruising in was Clausen to keep it alive. You watch Clausen, she went and got that ball, got it in the left hand, she's a right-handed player. You can see her dominant on that right side. Don't blink, because she'll try and go and rack on you, though. Pappas, Hadley, Pappas, pump fake, Diaz overplayed her, Pappas pulls up from 10. Right now it's the uh, Polly Pappas versus the uh, Regina Graves show on the offensive side. Good double team right here in the corner, but fortunately Clark was able to get out of it. Rocha drives right baseline, has a step on her defender, puts it up, just in and out, but she'll get two free throws. Tim, how many times have we seen in basketball games, you do the Stanford Cardinal game up there, when you aggressively go into the paint that you get a foul called in your favor? And exactly, is the, is the first free throw is no good, but they talked about how the, the overplay from Santa Cruz, and once you get a step on an overplay, the, the, the help has to come, and, and there's going to be somebody open or you're going to foul. Yeah. That help is going to be coming as she misses both ends of that one. And that's going to be one of the things. If this game gets close and it turns in disfavor of the Soquel Knights, it's the free throw line that's going to come to, to haunt them. You see Graves knocked that ball out of bounds. And she has been the player of the game so far with 18 points. Lawson gets a screen, dishes out, left side, jumper on the way, in and out for Ora Pesa. Graves with that battle for the ball. Rocha with it, slows it down. You set up their offense. You can see Clawson really pushing. Santa Cruz trying to push that Soquel offense as far away as they can. And Graves nails a three. And I think, Kurt, that the message is going to be simple for the co uh, coaches, the Jones. You got it. You can't go underneath the screen on Graves. Now, you watch Santa Cruz trying to get the ball inside. They're able to do it. Good fighting job by Hobley. She gets the foul call. So she's going to go to the line to shoot two. And this. Again, these teams have seen each other. They've played once before, so Kelwood's type. 
Good job by Shane as she just works it inside. A lot of head and shoulders and moving around. That's one of the key things if you're going to be underneath, I think anyway, is using your body, trying to get your defense to move. You know, head fake, shoulder fake, do something. Both these teams have struggled from the line. Three for six is Santa Cruz. And on the other side, just one for six is Sotel. White ball, so even though they missed two free throws, Santa Cruz is going to be able to take it out underneath the left of their own basket. Clawson will take it out. Clawson will recollect it, drive towards the lane. Roca put a hand on that. McBride is stocking Clawson up top. 15 on the shot clock. Habley leaves it off for Pappas. Tries to drive the lane and a nice little block hip check. And that's a foul. And we call against Azua. That's her second personal. Yes, Azua was doing the hands and the hip check. And down in there looks like John Hadley, one of the two officials. Curtis Gomez, the other one, gave that foul call. Curtis Gomez with the basketball, taking it out, or giving it to Clawson. 35 26, the lead for Soquel. Battle for first place. Last regular season game of the season, and the winner will get the one seed in the SCCAL tournament, and they'll get a buy into the semifinals. Clawson, left wing, three, front iron, no good. But the rebound, the shot is just a little bit high, and Soquel will end up with the board. Great heads up play by Clark to keep that one in. Yeah, nobody really screamed out. Good job by McBride, doing a nice little change of pace, a little crossover, and got Clawson going the wrong way, and Clawson fouled her right up at the top, of the, right in the middle of the court. Again, it's one of those fouls that you don't want to see happen, but it's just a good job offensively to get your person out of balance. Yeah, Clawson is such a quick defender, and you saw, I guess, McBride super quick to cross her over there. Graves dishes. The turnaround is no good for Clark, but a foul. Jammers number 13 with the foul. Nice work underneath by Clark. Keep moving, trying to find some way you can get that shot off. Clark doing a good job because starts right up at the free throw line, slides down the lane, gets that nice pass, doesn't get the basket, but she had a good percentage shot. The foul caused her not to make it. And two free throws. Free throw shooting woes continue for both these teams. I think they went to the Wilt Chamberlain or Shaq O'Neal free throw school. Second is good. So just three for 10 for Soquel today. And they have a 10 point lead. And you do 50% right now, right? You're just going to move it up just a little bit more. 60%. You can see how important free throws are. Pappas, Clausen. Back to Clausen between the rings. Gets a screen off the switch. Ball's rotated on the skip with eight on the shot clock. Pappas is fouled by McBride. Just got her arm tangled up there. And that's the third team foul. And that's a nice move by Pollock. She catches the ball. McBride reaches in. At that point, there's not a foul. But as Pappas continues to rotate away, that hand's going to continue to foul through. The third team foul against Soquel. Stewart comes into the game for the Lady Knights. McBride comes out. Quickly, a little bit too strong for Jemis. Since there is a foul call. Melissa doing a nice job. She put it up hard, but then went fighting for it and got that jump ball call or the possession arrow now. Clawson gets a screen, loses that ball for a moment. Roca all alone will lay this one up. Too strong. Great backside defense from Towel. That is just fantastic hustle by the freshman. Clawson doing a good job using her body, getting in a great position to make an easy little jumper. Clawson's into double figures with 10. 13 for Pappas. 36, 28. So Kells leads down to eight. Nobody stops Roca. She'll miss the lay in. It's kept in. Diaz is fouled by Clawson, though. Clark doing a nice job of getting that rebound back through. Rocha coming down twice. 
and missing two cripples. And that's going to be one of the things. One way you can miss a layup is if you you start to stop concentrating on the basket and start worrying about where's the defender. Uh, oops, I, I pulled up and started my travel to the basket a little bit too soon. There's Clark with it right back out to Diaz, and she's the hustle underneath by Clark and the ability for Diaz to be very quick, switching defensively, has been key to the SoCal Knights to keep this lead. Diaz with eight. 37-28, 305 in the third quarter remaining. The lead for SoCal. It went by as many as 10 in this game. Boston trying to set some kind of a pick on Graves, couldn't do it. Graves, tenacious defense on Tal. Boston up top. Seven on the shot clock, has to make something happen. With four on the shot clock, backs up even more. Two, one, off balance, no good. But she follows her shot and collects the ball. Pappas, pump fake, leaves it off. Or a Pesa through the lane. No good. Another offensive rebound. This one is deflected away. Or a Pesa went up with it. Graves knocked it away. Great inside positioning by the Santa Cruz Cardinals. How believe number 25 got underneath to the nice job, just walled off. Two Cardinals walled off three of the Lady Knights to get that rebound. Santa Cruz continues to apply pressure by having the ball out of bounds underneath their own basket. 221 remaining in the third, 37-28. The lead for Soquel here at Santa Cruz High School. Ora Pesa is double teamed, leaves it off for Towel. The aggressive defense and it produces a missed shot. Roca in the backcourt, double teamed. Numbers for the Knights if they push. Left wing wide open, three is no good. Rebound tips off a few pairs of hands. It ends up with Santa Cruz. And a foul call, called, it'll be the fourth against the Knights. John Wilson right out, slightly disgusted with that, although Stewart got a great look, and she is a good three-point shooter. She got a good look, just came up a little bit short. But it's aggressiveness of going after the offensive rebound that I'm sure is frustrating Coach John Wilson and the rest of the Lady Knights, as well as on the defensive end, not really getting in position to get that defensive rebound. If you want to check out this game or any of our other games this season or last season in CTV Sports, go to communitytv.org slash dubs and you can download that form. You can either mail it to us or you can call us 831-425-8848 is the number. The reset for you, third quarter, 152 remaining in the third quarter. So Kel 37, Santa Cruz 28. These two teams are playing for an SCCAL championship. What's at stake? As you hear the Santa Cruz bands playing the Imperial March with Star Wars. Uh, what's at stake is the one seat in the SCCAL championship, as well as a chance to put up a banner. A lot of banners here at Santa Cruz High School, including a 2009 and 2010 girls basketball championships. Tim Swartz along with the coach, Kurt Edwards. Clausen, just a little bit short. And that's what Soquel's got to do is get a rebound and a nice outlet pass. Graves pulls up, lays it up and good. Nice good. jump stop. Good hustle back by Tall, number 42. Right wing, three on the way, in and out for Pappas. Biggest lead of the game, 11 for the Knights with 115 remaining in the third. Or Pesa trying to do a backside steal. Look at McBride taking advantage of that lane. Clawson drives in. Good job by Stewart to turn her away. Clawson dribbling through all five players, finds an open pass. three on the way, bingo. That's somebody that got hot in the second quarter with nine points, needs to get hot for Santa Cruz so they can have a chance of winning this game. Still a lot of time to play though. We've got one more eight minute quarter to go. Up the left wing, Stewart. High right side for Azua. 
Roca, left wing, pullback for her second three of the game, in and out. Shot clock dead as the Cardinals collect the rebound. They've got a three on two. You're gonna leave it off for Pappas. Drives left the baseline and now Clawson will recognize. Shot clock's dead, 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Gonna set a pick to try and see if they can isolate with Clawson. Good job by McBride, nice switch over there by Rocha. Swings it, left corner, three, no good for a Pesa, and it's an eight point lead for the SoCal Knights as we go into the fourth quarter here on the CTV game of the week. Both these teams are playing for a league championship, and thus far, SoCal's gotten the better of Santa Cruz here in Santa Cruz, 39-31. I'll tell you, Tim, that last 20 some odd seconds was great defense for SoCal Knights as they, you can see that they're gonna try and isolate Clawson and do something on McBride. They had the pick set up, but Diaz does a nice job. They recognize the picks, he goes by, she switches off on Clawson. Clawson really has nowhere to go, dumps it off to Orpeza, but there's not a shot. We take a peek at Coach Jones in the middle right there of the Santa Cruz huddle. Let's take a peek at that defense there. We're gonna just slow that ball down. And here comes Clawson. She says, no, we're going to move that ball around. Good job by Diaz. The motion is fantastic. Ora Pace gets right down in the middle, but here's where it comes in handy. Great block out. Tall, number 42, with a good offensive rebound. This isn't a Monique. This is it for you seniors. Do you want a league championship? This is it. The message was simple from Coach Jones. <laughs> this is it. Your last chance to win a regular season championship. Both these teams wouldn't be surprised if we see them in about a week and a day, Kurt, in the SCCAL girls basketball final as we are underway here in the fourth quarter. 39-31, Roca. They gave her the center of the court. She takes it, she couldn't put it in, and the rebound off the hands of Clark out of bounds to the Santa Cruz Cardinals. If you wanted a motivational speaker at, ha at, at the, between the quarters, Monique was your speaker. She did a great job. Hit the, in that third quarter, Tim, Santa Cruz scored seven points. Five of them were by Pappas. Two of them were by Clawson. So Kel on the other side, they scored 12 points, and it was Graves with 10 of them. And a block by Diaz. But she'll be called for a foul. Notice this is the seniors. Both of these clubs have a chance to take take a league title as far as the league games are concerned. Obviously, they're going to probably, well, I shouldn't say probably, you never know. But you've got the SCCAL championship game that we will be telecasting, which is always, always an exciting tournament. Yeah, last year's girls' final was lost by SoCal to the St. Francis Sharks in double overtime. Pappas, and I'll tell you one thing, free throws now are gonna be very, very important. Seven point differential. Pappas with 17. It's a seven point game. We know the teams that will be in the tournament. The one seed will either be Soquel or Santa Cruz. Scotts Valley is gonna be the three seed, and the four seed will be the upstart St. Francis Sharks, which were winners of the SCCAL championship last year. Graves is too long on her jumper, and Clawson just keeps it in. Pappas looking to push it up, but she says I'll swing it up wisely. Gives it to the hand of the floor general. Lawson, right wing, cuts it in, pulls up, rolls it through from 10 feet. Five point game now. She has a very quick release. Here's that full court defense that could be problematic for Sokel, and it is that time. As McBride had the ball knocked away from her, it's gonna be out of bounds. Santa Cruz is gonna have it just to the right of their own basket. And that was just a hustle play. Pappas knocked it off a Soquel Knight as she was flying out of bounds.
Hall trying to get in position to get the ball. She's down low on the block against Clark. Backdoor cut, Clawson. Pulls up, no good from the right side. Roca with the rebound, smart idea, get it back to McBride. Yeah, but McBride's gonna be pestered all the way down the court by Clawson. Soft defense. Again, you can't, you know, backcourt or 10 seconds anywhere in women's basketball. Watch this defense, man to man. Santa Cruz is gonna come out and really push the envelope. They're gonna try and get that ball away from number four who's just got a hot hand. Diaz with just five on the shot clock. Graves recognizes it, she'll make a mad dash and just heave one up and nail it! Graves 25! The Graves' expression was great. She threw it in, came out with, oh my gosh. Well, maybe Regine Graves is gonna rethink playing Division I volleyball. Yeah, she's having a heck of a time doing it right now. 25 for her, 41-34. Happens on the give and go. Graves just stole it away, jump ball, possession arrow, keeps it with Santa Cruz, but maybe not the, the worst thing because of just 11 on the shot clock. We'll see this wild shot from Graves again. She's got to work, she knows it's going down. Claus is doing a nice job defensively, and she just throws a wild one up, and it goes in. Prayers are answered on the basketball floor. Pappas is going to let it fly. Got it. Give her 20, and it's just a four-point game. Soquel still leads. Graves going to peel out for the Knights. 5.15 remaining in the regular season for both these teams. Try and get some kind of movement, get it in the hand of the one who seems to have the hot hand, and that's Graves. Still man-to-man -man defense by the Cardinals. I'd say if you're going to match some cutters, you're going to have to cut a little bit faster. And a foul's called. As Clark put up a high archer, she'll get her second trip to the free throw line of the second half. 4.55 to go. 41-37 Knights lead over the Cardinals. Four point lead and what's been the Achilles heel of both of these clubs? The free, free throws. throws. Yeah. First one's good for Clark. She's two for three at the line. But they've had trouble. Graves is two for three. Roca is 0 for two. McBride 0 for two. Diaz just one for two. In oh. and out. She had a good rhythm on that one. That just banged around too much. 450, clock rolling. A sellout here at Santa Cruz. The Feldman is rocking. And right now, it's getting a little bit closer to nervous time. Crossing, pure shots. This is down to a one basket game, and McBride dribbled out of bounds. Double teamed out on the baseline. That's one of the things is pressed. One thing John Wilson and just about anybody else is going to do, it's very difficult on, on breaking the press. It, there's two things about a press, you know, that's all good or all bad, really. If you do it effectively, you can change the momentum of the game, you get some easy shots underneath, or get a turnover and have the ball underneath, underneath your own basket. The bad point is if the team breaks it, it could be a quick transition game and an easy two going the other direction. We'll see, this is just a pure shot from Glossop. Well, talking with Khalid Hicks, who works with number 14, Clawson, and, and I know that also Coach Jones, both of them, Monique and Pat, she has that quick release. You can see that not a real dribble down. She gets it in good rhythm. And it's how you catch and get yourself in a shooting position and then go up with rhythm. You've seen it watching the Cardinals play all the way in NBA and anything else. The pure shooters come into it with rhythm. She got it. She was set. Knees were slightly bent. She went straight up in a nice release. It was just good rhythm. You know, it's one thing, too, that we've, you noticed, too, from that shot in particular is, is the ability to turn the hips. Because she was at a kind of an awkward angle in terms of uh, she was square to left of the basket, and she was able to rip her hips through it. Yeah. You've got to be shoulders square, hips square to the target that you're shooting at. She did a nice job of getting everything squared up. Clawson inbounds the ball. That one was kicked by Roca. It's all right, we just started all over again. Same exact inbounds play. Pappas will collect it this time. Clawson, long range for the tie, in and out.
Santa Cruz is going to contest the ball coming down. They're going to stay with their man to man, which is a really soft press, if you will. Rocha. Santa Cruz, who's got some three point shooters. Rocha's been, and she's going to go right now. Not much rotation, but it doesn't matter. That's a huge three, or second into the game for Rocha. And it is a six point lead with under four left. Uh, I'm going to call traveling or carrying it over. That's great defense by the Knights. They saw a possible pass in Clawson, but just as she was ready to pass it, the Knights adjusted to that passing lane. She hesitated with it and put it back on the floor in a dribble, double dribbles or carrying it. Clawson and Pappas, they played over 100 games together here on this, not on this floor, but on these uniforms. Probably played about a good 30, 40 games on this floor, but. Those are the two players that have not come out of this game. Nora Pace has barely come out of this game as well as Habley. Now, they, the starting five, that unit has been in for a long time. Paul, who's for number 42, who's now switched on McBride, has probably been the only substitute. Coach Wilson not happy with that offensive pattern run by the SoCal Knights. McBride is back into the game for Sokel, who won the points. Or a Pesa. Lawson wants it up top. McBride's all over. Pappas fakes the three. The freshman Diaz right in her face against the senior. Right side angle jumper is no good. And Graves picks up the rebounds. You got to get an idea of the senior Graves trying to take control of it. Nobody really screened off. No one really wanted to go after the ball except number four. She went and got it. Timeout on the floor. Full timeout. So we're going to see what the, the two brain thrusts have got to see with two minutes and 52 seconds to go. There's John Wilson getting ready to diagram what he would like the Lady Nice to do. Let's hear what he has to say. We're going to run it when I say reset. When I say reset, we're going to do twister. Okay? We're going to do twister. Exactly. So Twister, here we go. She's going to scream. All right, you're going to come right over here and scream for Madison. Kiana, you're at the high post right here. You're going to screen up here for uh, Regine. Regine's going to go here. That's good. You don't have to make it an alley-oop, all right? You don't have to make it an alley-oop. You're down here on this side. You're over at this side, right here. You stick go. When I say Madison's the one, she's going to do it right here. And it when I say... Well, good thing that this game is uh, not live into the Santa Cruz huddle. We just saw Soquel, and you, you go into the mind of a John Wilson, who's such a good coach, and uh, you, you see him draw up the play. That's where, you know, people will talk about coaching coming into play in basketball, but it seems like the last two or three minutes of a game is when coaches really kind of take over a little bit and, and guide their players the most. You're, you're right on that with their, their coaching ability, the ability to call timeout, set an offensive play. So Kel almost didn't get the ball in bounds. Good heads up by Coach Wilson to get Rocha to get over there to get the ball. Or a Pesa, really, really aggressive foul going to be called against her. And for the SoCal Knights, that is the last foul before they'll be shooting free throws. The sixth against Santa Cruz, five against SoCal. Rocha up top. Watch this defense. It's going to be very aggressive in your uniform type of a defense. They don't want Roach to get that three off. They'll give it to Diaz. Just running the weave up top, bringing it down to 10 seconds. Six point lead for the Knights. Roca. They're trying to push her away so she doesn't have that good shot. And that's not what John Wilson drew up as he kind of laughs, but. That's the ability of a, of a Roca who throws it off the glass and good. Eight points for Roca, eight point lead for the Knights. Here's one of those times, I think, Tim, when you've got two dominant players like Santa Cruz has, Clawson with the ball and Pappas. A nice bank by Clawson. That you've got to get that other player into the scoring mix, and they really haven't had that happen at all in the second half. Yeah, 36 of the 41. 
have been between Pappas and Clausen. Or a pace that has five, nobody else has scored. Got to have some more movement offensively, that being the Knights. Looking to try and get the hands of Graves. A nice, good, aggressive defense. Clausen almost came away with the steal, got the ball with the hand, but too much body. And Roca will have the one and one. So, 47 41 is the score with 128 remaining in this game. Roca. First free throw is good. Not, not a whole heck of a lot of rotation on that one, but uh, it manages to go in. A former coach at UC Riverside, who a good friend of mine, Freddie Goss, doesn't coach there anymore, says doesn't have to look pretty, just has to get in the bucket. And the second's missed, but the best case scenario for Soquel, great job by Clark to clean up the boards. Graves, backdoor cut, and Diaz! Might have just put this one away. Nine-point lead for the Soquel Knights, 110 remaining. Fabulous move without the ball by Diaz. Whistle underneath on the floor. I think he's going to go out of bounds underneath the Santa Cruz basket. So it's going to be Santa Cruz defensively, they're going to have to gamble, and that's going to allow some possible open shots. One minute remaining in the game. Crossing through the lane, a blocking foul call. They're going to just keep right on attacking. Very, very important free throws. Down by nine, 62 seconds left to go. Every point is important, but if you're going to go back and look at what may or may not have cost this game for the Santa Cruz Cardinal, I'm going to say it's going to be free throws. Clausen has not had much trouble with the line. She's three for three, and including that last shot she just made. 17 points for Clausen. 50 to 42, 102 remaining. Clausen, who's headed up to Southern Oregon to play point guard, makes the second free throw. Now you're going to see the full court press put on by the Lady Cardinals. McBride threw that one, and a push call. See, that's one of the things that you can do when you get in there is get your hand on somebody and just that little bitty push. Now, whether it was a big one or not, and if you've got some good actors on the other side, you may get a pushing call against him. You want to you want to keep your presence, Tim, so everything's right there, but you don't want to be able to lean in and have a foul call. McBride, this is a huge one and one. If you make both these free throws, nine point game, 59 seconds hard. But if you miss the first one. Yep, and Santa Cruz is able to come down and get a bucket really quick. Misses the front end, but the rebound is collected by McBride. She throws it up and she was just shoved in the back. Hard foul. Diaz, that was a long bounce on that free throw. Doesn't necessarily happen that way. But it was Diaz who was able to battle for it. McBride breaking to the right after the miss. Ends up getting the ball and now goes back to the free throw line. Okay, that wasn't the worst case scenario, but you know, the good thing is for Soquel is they still have the ball and they burned some time off. There's Coach Jones. You want to see some intensity? Look at those eyes. John Wilson pitched here at Santa Cruz High, played basketball. Then went on to San Francisco State, was All-American, pitched in the bushes for the San Francisco Giants. Very, very intent, excuse me, intense competitor. He's intent on winning. He's intent, all coaches are intent on winning. All players are too. He saw the last foul by Claussen. That was, I don't know if you got a good look at that one, Kurt, but to me that was a that borderline was a intentional foul. That was, I don't know about intentional, it was borderline, but it was a frustration foul. And this is a young senior who uh, wants a league title. Now they have a chance to do co-league titles if they can't pull it out here with 56 seconds to go when they get into the SCCAL finals and they get able to come back up again and play the SoCal Knights. But in the season, they're looking at their second loss against the Lady Knights. 
McBride will hit the front end this time. That's her, believe it or not, that's her first, first point. point. Yeah, and she's been a big part of this game. But she has been defensively and moving the ball around. You know, she has been in Clausen's jersey the entire night. Stepped on the line. Eight point lead for Soquel, 56 seconds remaining. Clausen will let it roll down. Clock starts as soon as she touches the ball. Pappas is way downtown. Shorts. Did not have any shooting rhythm at all. You can see her kind of leaning into it. Could have taken that one little dribble and maybe gathered up some of her, her rhythm or at least set that set the offense up. Curtis Gomez with the call as Pappas is called for a foul. And that is now 10 team fouls against Santa Cruz. Be interesting to see how John Wilson plays it. He has two guards back in Rocha and McBride, so they're going to sit back there waiting to play defense as Graves goes to the charity strike. First free throw is in. 52-43. Reset for you, 41.7 seconds remaining, 52-43 the lead for Soquel, make it 53-43. We're in the fourth quarter, possession arrow is pointing to Soquel, and both teams are in the bonus. Clausen just goes all the way down to the hoop. Left-handed shot is no good. Graves just rips down the rebound. Looks for some help, bounces it out to McBride. Roca is fouled, and that'll probably do it with 26.6 seconds left. Yeah, all Soquel has to do right now is play catch. And you know baseball's right around the corner, but they've got to keep the ball moving. Santa Cruz is going to have to foul. It's a backcourt foul. You see Graves showing that she, you know, she had a fantastic, she had 23 points going into the fourth quarter. She's been relatively quiet, only four points here in the fourth quarter. Rocha has been the one that actually stepped up here in the fourth quarter, making some big buckets. Yeah, she had that three. She had a running banker, that free throw to get into double figures. She will not. That one tips out. 11 point lead for Soquel, 23 seconds left. Pappas hands it off, Clausen, long range, almost hit that one in. Diaz though will be called for the foul. Yeah. That's one of those fouls that John Wilson, not that she, he's not pleased about, but with a nine point, or the 11 point lead, he's not too upset. But from that far out, just don't commit the foul because now you're gonna get, with the clock stopped, three opportunities to get three points. So it looks like the one seed for the SCCAL tournament will be Soquel, the winning outright championship. There's Second free throw is good. 20 points now for Clausen on the night. 20 points also for Pappas. Not enough though, 40 of the 45, and now 41 of the 46 between two players. Roca Pappas will go you. for a tied up jump ball. Tim, the Feldman is filled. We're getting running down on this one, and it's going to be Soquel Pappas again with that aggressive foul, and that's really all the Cardinals can do right now. As soon as the Soquel Knight touches the ball, just foul him. There's Paul, the young freshman. She's had she hasn't scored, but her presence defensively and on the ball has just been fantastic. You know, Tall has done just very, very well. Rocha got the first one. She's got 10 now. Second one is good as well. Love that ambient on the rim. Dawson, you don't want to foul here. She was throw up a three. Was looking for the foul, and a foul for Mora Pisa. And this one, I think we could put a little bow onto this one. 56-46. The SoCal Knights are going to come out victorious and win an outright league championship. I mean, before the season, I think people, a lot of people are talking about Scotts Valley. They won the regular season last year and returned basically everybody from a very talented team. But a lot of people are talking about Santa Cruz with 
Uh, Pappas and Claussen, and they very well should. They have with 21, Pappas with 20 tonight. But it seemed like Soquel didn't get as much pub, and they've kind of proved to be the best team in the regular season. They've done a fine job. You know, one thing when you've got dominant players that Santa Cruz has, the two primary players, give them their points. Stop everybody else. You know, make exactly. it difficult for the other two, and that's what Soquel has done. Even though the two, Pappas and Clausen have, have made their points, they've had to work for them. Last shot for a career here at Santa Cruz for Pappas is a little bit long. 57-46, that was a statement win for Soquel. They win this game by 11 points. The first time these two teams met, Soquel won 44-40, but it was a game that Santa Cruz kind of controlled for the first oh, three and a half quarters. This time there really was no doubt I think it, the, the, the final score for this one was indicative that Soquel was a better team. It was. They, they came up, they, and they were consistent. 15 in the first quarter, 12 in the second quarter, 12 and 18 here in the all-important fourth quarter. For Santa Cruz, they had that one slippy little third quarter where they only scored seven points, and that ended up being too much for them. They scored 15 here in the fourth quarter. A tremendous defense by the blue-clad Soquel Knights and Regina Graves just had a fantastic night with unofficially 27 points. Yeah, 27 points for Regine Graves, who is our CTV player of the game. Graves, just a tremendous performance for Soquel and her final regular season game for Coach Wilson and the Knights, Rusty Reed is standing by with our player of the game, Regine Graves. We're with our George H. Wilson player of the game, Regina Graves, 27 points tonight, every which way, including that crazy left-handed shot earlier on. Congratulations on the league championship. Thank you. We really, we worked really hard this season, and I'm so proud of all of the girls and my whole team for pulling that one out and stuff, yeah. The last game uh, between Santa Cruz and you, uh, a little closer. You able to handle them this time. What was the difference? Um, this time we came out. We knew what to expect from them. We knew how to shut them down. And we just came out not wanting to lose. And what will you do if you do, in fact, play them a third time in the league championship? We'll do the same thing we did this time. Just come out, play our hearts out, and hope for the best. Regina Graves, George H. Wilson, player of the game. Back to you, Tim and Kurt. Thank you very much to George H. Wilson Mechanical Contractors, family owned and operated for over 90 years, providing heating, plumbing, and mechanical contract contracting services. George Wilson is a proud member of Think Local First on the web at geohwilson.com. Once again, the final, 57-46. The girls of SoCal, SCCAL, outright regular season champions. We'll be back with the boys game after this on our Game of the Week on Community TV. The final, the SCCAL Girls Varsity Basketball Regular Season Championship goes to Soquel. Congratulations to the Knights. They defeat Santa Cruz 57-46 behind 27 points from Regine Graves. With Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz, and let's take a look at the second half and how this game went down. You see Graves straight away with the three and in. As Rusty mentioned when he was talking to Regine, she scored in every way possible. She did. She got from outside, and you see her go right down the middle. Nice little lift right over the top for quick five points. Now, Clausen, she is just a dynamo. Controls the ball, controls her body, gets in a nice little percentage shot and puts that one right on in. Yeah, Clawson at 21, but it wasn't enough. Regine Graves, a nice pull up, old school lay in. Yep, going over tall. Now watch Clawson again, working independently. Gets in the lane, kicks it outside. Pappas, she went a little bit cold in that second half, but she had 20 points also, a good senior. You see the nice pull up from Clawson. I mentioned, last regular season home game for both those two players who have been four-year varsity players. They'll be playing at home in the CCS tournament. They will, and that's Roach in number 10 with one of her bed, better ones. And now inside, McBride, who only had one point, but you can see the great passing all the way inside. Diaz 
with that nice easy one. Moving with the ball, moving without the ball, very key to the SoCal win. So the final was 57-46. SoCal defeated Santa Cruz to win the outright girls varsity basketball championship. Here with Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz, and the boys game coming up next.